good morning evening everyone uh, thank you so much for joining in and uh, my name is pail i'll be your session coordinator for this particular session and uh, so welcome me in joining pooja jagani and manoj kumar and these guys will be having a very interesting fireside chat session on the topic how can i become a committer we are very glad that you people joined us today thanks pail um, hello everyone i'm so happy to be here um, along with pooja jagani um so happy uh, to have you here on um, an exclusive fireside chat chat session with you on um, i think the title is how do i become a committer but it's more about how pooja become a committer and i'm hope there are a couple of things that we can learn from her experiences on how she become a committer and uh, how uh, you if you are listening to this i'm sure you would be interested very much in knowing about how can i become a committer or contribute to open source in general um, you know irrespective of any other projects or in particularly in selenium since the selenium conf we'll be very focused on keeping um, uh, what is uh, selenium and how someone can contribute and especially learn many things about how pooja has become a committer um pooja um warm welcome to you and um i think i um, was actually preparing how should i introduce you uh, i mean there's no actual any script or anything but i think one thing for sure i can say uh, to folks listening is um pooja is the um wonder woman of the selenium project uh, the one and only active women committer um, that we have uh, and um, so yeah we are so happy to have you pooja uh, over to you i would like you to introduce yourself uh, to the attendees and also um, talk a bit about how uh, selenium came into your life thank you so much manoj uh, first i would like to thank pyar for the quick introduction really appreciate it uh, thank you manoj for such a generous description um and you're being actually very kind and it's actually you're also a little modest you've been here for over a decade you're a part of the plc the planning committee and your contribution to the selenium project in every aspect is commendable and i'm more than happy to share this stage with you um and be here also as a part of the selenium conference light event uh so hello everyone this is pooja jagadi i think now you know that's who i am i am a team lead at browser stack Uh, I'll talk a little bit about my journey, so everyone has an idea, and a little bit about my background, so everyone knows uh, how this fits right in. I, after doing my undergrad in computer science, I did my masters from UCLA. Uh, after which I joined as a new grad at Adobe headquarters in San Jose. Uh, there I was primarily working on microservices and developing tools for internal teams. Uh, tools were related to observability. We were building observability-related SDKs, observability-related tools that our internal system sister teams could use. Um, about two and a half years later, I moved back to India to be with my family. Uh, as a part of transition, I was working in a small startup for a bit, but eventually I was looking at something that was a little more long-term, and that's where Browstack came in. Uh, I found Browst. I bumped into Browstack, liked what they were doing, applied for a job. it turns out they were starting a open source program office led by the very capable david burns who's my manager and also one of the uh, integral part of the selenium community and uh, things went right and i landed a job in browser stack to work at the open source project and the first project they were working on was selenium and i was more than glad uh, that's what it happened quite an interesting journey pooja thanks for thanks for sharing that um i'll i'll come back to um the last bit of introduction that you gave but uh, before we uh, uh, you know pick it up on that uh, my first question to you is pooja um according to you what does open source mean and what do you think about contributing to open source in general okay um so like the so i'll go to the first question what does open source mean i think the word itself says open but when i say open it doesn't mean um it definitely means that the code is open uh, it definitely means the code is available for everyone to use it and develop into but one thing i think a lot of people maybe not necessarily look at from that perspective i think um open source also means it's open to everyone in the sense it's inclusive to everyone um it doesn't matter what your background is you could potentially be a doctor and want to write code as long as you want to do good for the project you could just come in um no one holds that against you and that's something i really really like about open source anyone who wants to contribute it's very very welcoming um so that's that's one side of what does open source mean uh and uh, when you ask me um 
the second part. So yeah. I think contributing to open source has a lot of a lot of scope for growth um, in in multiple facets, right? Like you can have there is a lot of scope for personal growth. There's a lot of scope for your actually working with the smartest people, getting your code reviewed with the smartest people. So there are great learning opportunities and co and as you the more you collaborate with them. Uh, you also network with them. So that comes in your net professional network group. That just happens, right? It just fits right in. At the same time, you also become a part of this very big community um, in which you're giving, you're learning from them, you're giving back to them. It, it's an endless cycle. And at the end, not, not necessarily at the end of the journey, through this journey, it's an immensely rewarding experience to know that you're contributing to a greater good that's helping a lot of developers out there. Nice, nice. Thanks, Pooja. Um, so picking up from your introduction, which is actually interesting to know, because um, you said you have been interviewed at a role specifically for open source, right? Um, so my question is, um, I don't know how others feel, but sometimes I've felt this and um, in my early days, and I'm sure still a lot of people feel so, is um, how do you feel about contributing code publicly? Because I know you have been a developer and you have been, um, you know, coding for your living, uh, but that's totally very different from contributing to open source, right? So what was your, like, let's take a before and after view around um, how it was earlier to now contributing code in public. Uh, definitely. So I think to summarize in one statement, it's a joyful ride with a very shaky start. Um, when I say shaky start, it's, it's, it's on me in the sense um, the before part, before I realized I was going to be part of the open source team, I was very thrilled that I'm getting a chance to do this, that we have this special opportunity to, to be able to do this. But at the same time, there was a lot of uh, bouts of self-doubt, a um, lot of thinking that what if I'm like, uh, what if my code doesn't work? Uh, what if I mess up the code? Uh, what if it doesn't meet the code quality standards? Like there was so many questions in my head. Uh, what if I don't understand the code? Uh, code source is so big, how I'd have to navigate my way through. So these were the kind of questions that, that came to me before I started. Um, and the after part, or maybe the during part, is when I slightly gain confidence. And I'll tell you how. I think Selenium committers or the contributors have an important role to play in it. Um, I remember when my first commit went in, it was related to observability because that's what I had worked in and that's what just fit right in as a transition just to getting started for me. Uh, first commit went in, there's always when your code is merged, there's a thank you that says thank you Pooja Jagani at the end. Uh, that really helps as a big confidence booster. When I got my first commit in, I know Manoj, you reached out to me. Uh, I did not have an active Twitter account. You asked, hey, let's have a Twitter account. We want to share your contributions, showcase it to the world. Um, and it was really, really uh, fulfilling to be able to do that. And slowly, that's how I built up in terms of getting uh, help from the committee whenever I wanted, uh, suggesting ideas, um, them always helping me review the code and you know give suggestions as needed. So the after part is now, it's, it's, it's a beautiful joy, right? Wonderful, wonderful. I think my next question was around, do you remember your first comment? You already answered that. It was around observability. So what I'm going to ask you next is, uh, do you remember who merged it? I don't remember who merged it. I have a feeling it's most likely Simon, but I unfortunately, I don't remember exactly who that would be. Got it, got it. It has to be Simon, Diego. I mean, this <laughs> yeah. fine folks, right? Yeah. Yes. It's a wonderful team we have got. Um, wonderful. Pooja, um, next thing that I want to ask is, um, you have been around Selenium for quite some time now. Like if you were to change something the way it is right now, maybe you might be thinking, you know, why the heck Simon has done, you know, this way or, you know, why Diego has done it some way. Uh, you've been seeing the code that we have written over a year, so over a decade and a half, maybe. Um, uh, what that would be? So, so I, I think when it comes to code wise, I think they have a lot more expertise um, and they're the ones I look up to. Like I want to code like Diego, I want to code like Simon. It, it's become like a role model sort of a situation. But uh, I have often seen Simon leave these to-do comments in Java. Um, and if you go through it, like if you just were going GitHub search, like hash, little be like slash, uh, like comment to-do, uh, stop being lazy. Comment to-do, <laughs> Simon to disable this, enable this test. 
to do uh, this is too much for the users you know we need to rework on this so there are a lot of to do items that he's left behind which i always wonder why do we not get to it i always wonder that either, either me uh, diego or anyone why do we not get to the tech that's uh, that has been listed but i think it's also on us there's just too much on our plate so that's that's one thing i notice another one thing is there is like if you talk the selenium contributors they've been here for so long they have so much immense and implicit knowledge around browsers the way they work before the way they work now the way they work after um the web driver spec um there's a lot of context in their minds in their heads um which always is not out and about and i don't blame them it's not something easy to just offload there's just so much out there which comes in maybe as conferences or but there is this one section on selenium website um it says musings about how i things are i'm not i don't remember the exact title but That's right yeah i think the first, there are two tidbits bits in there and then the first one is how atoms became atoms how selenium atoms became atoms and it was just so good to know the context so i just wish there was maybe a easier way to knit pick that context or to knit pick everyone's brain to to get that <laughs> that's wonderful i think it's interesting how you picked up all the nook and corners of selenium mm -hmm. in in a short while i mean simon talked about atoms and why it was named it in his keynote to, i yeah, mean earlier yes. earlier this evening right yeah that's yeah, quite i mean folks you're listening if you have attended simon's talk you have told about atom now you see what puja explained about atom right so that's 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 about it it's in selenium now um slightly moving on to how do you organize your day puja like um i know right now you have a full time contributor like full time uh, role as an open source uh, uh, contributor so how do you plan your day is there is there a road map that you follow or um do you pick you know issues that you want to work on so how does your day looks like and also tell us a bit more about how do you coordinate with the whole selenium contributors team okay um so a day pretty much the thing is i think one thing to keep in mind is uh, selenium developers are everywhere uh, it's pretty much like everyone's working uh, around the clock for like the sun whatever one may like to call it so i am from an india time zone so when i usually start my day in the morning that's when either the american folks i think titus is there around late sometimes so uh, that coincides but i think first thing i do is obviously check my email go through company slack the standard routine uh, then i have dedicated time allocated to check selenium slack uh, because there's selenium tnc channel commit bitten friends dedicated channel there's a selenium channel just for help or any other conversations pertaining to it and that's what i go through and try to answer if i have any concerns or uh, things that need my reply if it's usually i think in the morning it begins with titus being around because people in the european uh, continent are still sleeping so i think that conversation gets wrapped up he doesn't sleep isn't it titus no i don't think so he does <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i i remember like we have a like whenever someone applies to join slack channel we get an invitation to accept or not and i used to do that quite often because we are in the indian time zone and i remember still i used to do a lot and and these days uh you know for past couple of months i'd see it's already been approved like then i see it will be like approved by titus fortner i was like oh this guy doesn't sleep at all <laughs> it's exactly what you felt to so yeah i mean that's the team yeah and i think uh, once uh, any of those conversations have gone through it's um trying to either uh, typically i'll be trying to fix a bug um complete a feature or work on documentation that needs to be done if um like you said if i'm done with whatever i have on my plate or my mind the best place to go is the issue tracker um have a look if there are any issues or pull requests that need to be uh, merged in anyway there are some concerns that need to be looped back to the selenium folks um we might have some internal law uh, like office commitments in general but and then comes the afternoon late afternoon time which is when it's morning in the european continent and then you have david coming in and there's day diego around so there's more chatter more conversations any questions concerns doubts that we may have uh, that will carry on at that point of time and i think additionally every uh, two weeks is when the selenium tlc meets uh, we have it on the selenium tlc channel where there are other folks as well uh, helping for the betterment of selenium and that's that's one thing i really enjoy because that's where people come together to discuss uh, selenium in all its technical strengths to plan for the next release to see what progress we have made in terms of pull requests the features we want in issues closed 
what we want for the major release. Uh, there's a lot of technical discussion that goes through. And uh, one beautiful part about that is people come from different time zones. People come from different backgrounds. People come from different companies, could be potential competitor companies. But in when you're in Selenium Slack, everyone is one. Oh, the male goal is Selenium and betterment of Selenium. And I really like how those conversations go. That's wonderful, right? I mean, that's something related, you know, the same thought process that I have as well. I think it resonates well with the opinion that you shared. I mean, the inclusivity around the Selenium project, I mean, we didn't, it was not that good back in the days, but at least slightly getting better uh, in terms of what all we do. But I think every person is very different. And I think it is all has an influence based on where they come from, like what I mean, do they have English as their, you know, native speaking language or whatever it is. Uh, I think, I think the same rule applies in terms of coding as well. So when we think through a problem, it all depends on the contextualization of, uh, you know, localization of where we are right now. And I think that's the beautiful part that you touched about. Selenium is a project where we have people from all over the world. Uh, well, we should still increase the diversity. Diego, Diego wouldn't agree to it, I know. But while we still be improve, need to improve the inclusivity of the project, I think so far that I've seen in the decade of you know being associated with the project, I think that is one thing that I've truly learned as well. Uh, that is very true, like approaching a problem with a particular thought process, it could be the other way around. And it is so you know, um, welcoming and it is so uh, enlightening to see how people think through such problems and an approach. I think that uh, I totally agree with you that that's the best part about, or that's the after part that you mentioned, right? Like you feel super fulfilled about, yeah, that's great. You, I mean, that's when, it doesn't stop only from after you contributing code. It also about when you're reviewing a code. That's that's more important because that's when you know we 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 have to improve a lot as well. So given I talk about reviewing the code process, Pooja, you've been a committer, and um, um, have you? What does you look for when you review a code? Uh, when someone contributed in public, um, how do you go about commenting it, or or how do you encourage someone if say I've, I've contributed an API, which which absolutely looks bad, or it doesn't have to be the way that it designed, right? So how would you go about um, uh, encouraging the developer or, or what will be your thought process? Have you come across any situations like that? Um, I've not exactly come across situations ex like that, but it's maybe a little, um, sometimes like the intention is right. It's just the way we want to approach the problem might not be aligning with the way Selenium thinks. And it's nothing to take away from develop developers, uh, contributors, time and effort. We definitely appreciate that. But it just could be that there was some context that uh, they might not have had, right? But uh, typically when a pull request comes in, I think the number one thing you see is correctness. Um, if it goes with what Selenium project is intending to, if it's a it's an alleged bug or maybe it's it's a bug, but then it uh, there's a different use case where it doesn't fit in, or there's a feature that we were looking for first to identify if that fits in. If it does, um, we identify um, the typical code quality checks that one does. Any suggestions? There are sometimes very healthy conversations that go through that. Hey, maybe in Java this how we do it, uh, or what do you think if we rename it this way? Uh, and then they share their opinion and we're pretty open to that. And they're also pretty receiving about the comments we give. Uh, we try to ensure if there are sufficient tests uh, just to validate what we have. Like, yes, I think Selenium is very big on test-driven development. Um, so that is that is one loop, like that's one feedback that we loop into yep. it. And uh, if there are more conversations, detailed conversations, we welcome them to the Selenium Slack to discuss things at length and see how we can help them uh, how they can help us so that we can get their code landed in. Got it. Got it. Amazing. Um, my next question would be, uh, Puja, imagine me as a as an automation tester, right? I'm I'm working in automation testing using Selenium um, for quite some time, uh, but I wanted to contribute to Selenium. So, uh, what are the places to look for? How should I start contributing to Selenium? I think um, anyone who's new to contributing to Selenium, uh, one thing I would like them to at least uh, consider is every contribution has impact. Um, it's not measured by how big or small it is or where it is. A simple example, if one is starting off with, uh, usually a documentation is a good start. When you're looking at the documentation, you might be missing some translations. 
uh, we might be missing um, some features that we've not added or there might be a code example which is not working correctly there could be any sort of a use case yeah. and if they help us in that uh, imagine what is code without documentation uh, it's impact right uh, similarly if someone thinks that uh, in a selenium repo uh, anything um, that is that we want people's help from that they can help us and we have a needs help tag they can filter by that there are issues there uh, they are more than welcome to ask questions and we'll reply discuss it further on slack as needed but uh, without if we didn't have their help how will we progress further so it's 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 important for everyone to understand like contribution every contribution is impactful and that they're more than welcome in the selenium community and whatever they do that sense of belonging is going to be intact um, i think that is that is what everyone should keep in mind because then the fear of it being scary will slowly start you know absolutely i mean can't agree more with it i think that wording is i can totally agree with you like no contribution is small it's it's pretty impact and i know we got like another six minutes more for a change i'll pick a question from the q a uh, panel uh, puja um from an anonymous attendee um the question is who defines and manages the backlog for selenium um i think that we don't have a single person who defines and manages a backlog for selenium it's not how we typically have in closed source project um it's more of like i said we have selenium tlc meetings where we identify the major action items that need to go in for the next release uh, what is missing how can we bridge the gap who can help take uh, charge of it um that's one thing and i think one big part of open source is also it's it's free flowing it's also self driven so it could be in the sense you look at a you look at the issue list um and see there's a bug that's high priority that needs to go in it's also a way if you think about it typically as developers we have this sometimes you have a itch we can't scratch it could be a technical debt changing a library um, redoing code but you get to scratch the itch in open source you can pick a priority mm -hmm. you can go like hey i think i want to read like this because it'll be maintainable later i want to rewrite the same i make it readable for a users you can do that so the backlog it depends on where you're coming from or what you think is more aligned with the selenium at that point of time got it got it wonderful pooja um more questions coming in that's great um no question is silly please folks ask more questions um i think pooja will also hang around in the uh, hangout channel uh, hangout table um next question is from the man himself naresh chain um this is a very wonderful question um i can easily so what was the hardest part of contributing to selenium project i mean we have talked about all nice things but i know you you earned the commitment yourself it's it doesn't come easily i know because i've been there but um what do you think is the most hardest part so the hardest part i would say is um not getting scared of the mono repo we have uh, i think uh, saiven has very gracefully covered the plowly got repo we have and what why we have it so that stays intact right in the previous uh, session today but as a dev, like when you're starting off it's very easy to get startled by all the languages sitting in one place uh, you and i work primarily with java that's where i started you open java earlier we used to have a client package and a server package now it's all one yep um so navigating your way through might seem hard at first but the more one does it one realizes the logical grouping of it it takes some time but i've also realized if anything seems hard you ask the selenium contributors you'll be sorted absolutely there you go any questions i mean come to slack channel then we'll be there to help you out um yeah naresh agrees to it quite intimidating <laughs> yeah totally agree thanks naresh for that question um yeah there's more questions coming and interesting i'll hold on to my questions um but these are all very interesting um what is from magesh nagamani what is an interesting new feature that you're currently working on with selenium uh, interesting new feature i wouldn't say it's exactly new it's a work in progress um mm -hmm. what we are working on is what we call bydai i know not a lot of people are aware of bydai so make it a little clear it's a, it's a bidirectional api it's very similar to what uh, chrome dev tools protocol does but this is a more standardized protocol where all browser vendors are coming in together uh, and they have this just like the web driver uh, 
spec, they have a web bi-directional web driver spec where when you're talking as a client to the browser, you open a WebSocket connection and then you can talk through it. And the reason why this is being done is a lot of things that happen on the browser is event-driven. And because in, in a WebSocket, it's a two-way communication. So you can subscribe to an event and browser can let you know if something of interest has happened. Um, that was the core reason why this exists. So the BiDi spec is in progress. Um, browser vendors are working towards implementing those APIs. We already have a one flavor of it in the form of CDP and some user-friendly APIs like network interception, uh, geolocation simulation, uh, DOM mutation identification, those kind of things. But uh, BIDA is going to be a very standardized spec that we're willing to wanting to implement. Um, so when store slowly as browser vendors implement it, we're trying to keep up with the same. Wonderful, wonderful. I think there's more questions coming in. We have two minutes more. Uh, I think slightly for a change, there is a suggestion from Dinesh um, on when there is a new version, um, why don't you guys do a video on the latest version? Can we have something similar for Selenium or are we already doing it? What do you think about it, Pooja? Um, I think when there is a, and that's, I mean, that's a valid suggestion or a concern. Um, when we had, when we have a new major version, we usually have uh, videos on it. I think last when we did Selenium 4, um, it was like a bang on entry sort of a thing. Uh, there was a blog about it. Uh, there have been videos about what's new in Selenium 4, even when it started till, till date, till to date. Um, there's a lot of information out and about as to what's new in Selenium 4. I think the Selenium 4 new feature, Simon wrote a blog. He has done videos on it and there's a lot of content that's gone along. So I think anything which has major changes coming in, we already covered ground. And uh, in case if you're missing something, more than happy to take suggestions or platforms where we'll have a better reach. Cool, cool. All right, we'll take a last question, Pooja. Uh, it's been a wonderful conversation. Um, I think the last question is around what would be a piece of uh, wisdom that you would like to share um, to people who are looking forward to contribute to open source or probably stepping into the world of open source or who are just an automation tester now or probably they are thinking about contributing um tell us a bit like tell us your thoughts around how they should uh, you know overcome um the, the thoughts and as well as uh, were there any stereotype like given there are a lot of stereotypes around uh, did you experience any discrimination while contributing to the project um you know combine if you combine these both uh, i think we can summarize completely around, you know, what's the wisdom that you want to you know, share to the people who are listening and, and hopefully, uh, you know, next time we will uh, have more committers uh, on, on the Selenium from India specifically. Definitely, uh, definitely. So I think um, earlier when I said that when what open source means, it means inclusive is what I've learned from Selenium. My interaction for open source journey so far has been Selenium. So all the experiences I primarily draw are from Selenium. Um, so like I say, open source, it does not matter what your background is, as long as you're willing to learn and take that effort and time uh, to contribute for the good of the project. Trust me, there's no one who's going to go and see, oh, what are you on LinkedIn? Oh, what are you? No, no one's going to do that. There is no judgment. This is a very judgment-free space. Um, there are no sort of biases as long as you're doing good. Um, people are willing to help you. People are willing to guide you, uh, even mentor you to an extent. Uh, to guide you in the right direction. So I don't think there's any sort of biases remotely that I have faced. You've always spoken in a very respectful manner. Um, the thank you at the end of every comment mm -hmm. is wonderful. The same thank yous and appreciations goes on in Selenium Slack. If you see, um, it's out for everyone to see. They can go see it. They can see it on our Twitter. It's all public. There is, there's nothing that we got to hide in that front. Um, and also when it comes to peace of wisdom, I think I would again reiterate back to the thing that uh, every contribution is impactful. Um, so one is getting started, they can get started in any space. They want to get start. They want to help change a typo. It'll be wonderful. They want to add comments. It'll be great. They want to add example docs. It'll be great. Even if they want to come to Selenium Slack, where people asking for help and help reply questions, that is also equally beneficial. So any step they want to take a little closer towards the journey it's helping Selenium community as a whole. Um, so I would just suggest don't try and be scared. I know it was scary for me as well, but we have wonderful, wonderful folks 
um, to guide you through the process. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Can't Thank summarize you. better. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much, Pooja and Manoj, for being us with. Her. I am sure, very sure, like all of the participants are very much influenced by with you, Pooja, and I'm sure there were might be many more contributions on the way just by, by sharing like the awesome examples that you shared and your quote. I like, very much liked your quote. Like, no, every contribution is a significant one. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Payal, um, for hosting us. And um, Pooja, thank you for joining. And um, hopefully, you know, I've asked the right questions and it has been super helpful for all of you who attended. Um, and uh, I think this is uh, entirely a uh, a spotlight to bring the Indian community, um, especially around open source. And I, the first edition we had Sri Harsha, this edition it's a puja. And I'm hoping next year we have a new, at another new committer, uh, you know, from our Indian community to the project um, and, and we'll host them. So looking forward to the next one. And um, if I'm sure you're inspired by this, so go join the Selenium Slack channel, fire up your IDEs and fire your questions to us. And I'm sure you'll become a committer too. Thank you so much. This was lovely. I will not lie. I was a little nervous, but this has gone like it was smooth. Thanks to you. Thank you so much.